Today, I'm going to show you how to paint this simple landscape scene in watercolor. We're going to talk about the major things that you need to know to make scenes like this paintable for you. And by the end of this, you're going to know the major concepts to paint your own landscape scenes in watercolor. So the first thing that you need to think about is the large shapes of the scene. And to help you understand this, look at this reference photo. I like to think of this painting here as two major shapes. You have the sky and the ground that make up one shape. And then you have the massive trees and the hills in the distance that we will paint over that. That's your second shape. That second shape is gonna define this barn in our painting. After you select the scene, you're going to want to lay out your drawing. An important rule here is to compose the most key elements of the scene on one of the thirds of your painting. To determine this, you can lay a grid over your painting of lines, and it's a simple tic-tac-toe shape on top of your painting. And where these lines intersect, that's where you want to compose the most interest in your scene. So we want this barn to be at one of those intersections. In the reference photo, we have these dark vertical trees. I'm gonna move those and put them right here on this side of the barn. This vertical, I want to use to lead our eye into the scene and give us a nice area of interest right here. After we've composed the scene and done our drawing, then we get into the painting process. So let's take a look as I paint this scene and I'll walk you through each step along the way. I'm going to wet down both sides of my paper and lay it flat on my surface. Now, I like to wet down both sides because it gives me more time before the paper dries, and that way I can paint wet into wet a little bit more. So I take a sponge, and we're gonna wet down the back of the paper. Now, I'm not getting it soaked, I'm just getting it nice and evenly wet. Now the front. I'm going to do the same thing. I don't need to worry about skipping over anything. I'm just wetting down the whole paper. Okay, so now let's start to paint. I'm going to use a large mop brush to start things off. Let's think about the lightest values in this scene. So the color of the clouds. I'm going to use a little bit of warmth here. Raw sienna. A little bit of rose matter permanent, a touch of lavender, some cerulean, just kind of fiddling around until I come up with a fairly, now don't worry if you don't have all these colors, I'm just trying to mix a pale gray that leans a little bit warm. And I'm gonna just cover the paper with that. This is a nice light value for the cloud color, very light. And I'm gonna come back in a minute and paint some clouds over those areas. Now I wanna think about the color of this barn. I'm gonna rinse my brush off. It's kind of a cooler color. I'm gonna mix in some cerulean into what I already mixed up down here. Now the temptation is to go really light on this wash because we don't have anything to compare it to other than the white of the paper. But don't be afraid to paint strong in this first wash, especially when we get down into this area, and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, what I'm laying in now is the color of the barn that I'm gonna paint around in the next phase. And you can go right through. Anything that's darker, you can go right through. Paint right through that. There's a little touch of some rust in there, some other colors. You know, this is the fun part of the painting where we can just let these colors kind of flow together, melt together. You know, so let's, let's do that. Let's take advantage of that. A little more cerulean. I'm just mixing a lot of these colors together. Right into there. You know, just 
mixing it right together. And now when we get beyond that barn, we're going to get into um, some of the other colors of the grass and things that are surrounding. So you see, because the paper's wet, how I'm just letting those colors blend together. Okay, my sky is still damp. I'm gonna come right back to that in a minute. But what I wanna do now is mix up some green to use for some of these trees. Raw sienna and cobalt turquoise. I love that combination to create green. And you know, I'm even, I'm even gonna mix in some of what I already have over here. Some of those greens look a little cooler. Let's just mix in some of that. And all this is going to be darker. Remember that. It's all going to be so much darker when we go back in and, and um, paint over it one more time. This is a fun part of the painting process where we can let these colors just blend in together. All right, we are down to the ground plane with our lightest values. I'm going to pause on that for a minute. Let's see. I'm going to throw something a little cooler to let it blend here. There's some cooler colors back there. Really can just have fun with this. Let's pause on trees for a minute. And before we move on, I'm going to take a brush that's just a little smaller, another round brush that still gives me plenty of control, and I need to finish up the sky. I'm taking some cerulean, some cobalt blue, maybe a touch of cobalt teal blue. Now if you don't have all these colors, don't worry. And what I'm thinking about here is a little more paint and a little less water than what I've been using more of a rich blue color. All right, let's see what this looks like. And I, right now, I just want to create some of the sweeping effects of the sky here. Now what I'm doing is negatively painting the white parts of the cloud. So I'm painting around the clouds to define them. It's a very important skill in watercolor. And one thing we know about skies is typically up towards the top of the sky is a little richer blue. Your strongest blue can be up here. So let's put a little more strength. So I use a little more cobalt blue, a little more strength at the top. I don't want to become too obsessed or, or labor over this too much. So now I'm using a little more water, a little more cerulean. And just finish off our impression of this sky. I'm going to leave some more white in that area. One thing I don't want to do is have the same brush strokes just over and over and over. Mix it up, turn your brush, do a different kind of mark. And just let it blend right into these light values of the hill. And we're going to go over all that again. Now that we've done that, we're going to move into the foreground. The paper's still damp. I can still work from this nice wet edge here. I'm just going to keep on working with this brush. All right, I'm seeing some, I'm gonna take some of the green. What I really don't wanna do is go too light on this part of the painting. You know, I have a lot of water on the paper, a lot of water on my brush, things are gonna dry. Um, so use a lot of paint. Compensate for the drying and fading that's gonna happen. Okay. Let's just start with what I have on here, some green. Well, actually, let's start. 
Let me rinse that off. I'm not happy with that. I want to take some rose matter permanent, some lavender, raw sienna, mix it in with some of this stuff that I have on my palette to neutralize it a little bit more. Let's use some of this first. There's some of this purpley, I don't know if they're wildflowers or what down here, but let's just let that blend right in with this here. Maybe a touch of burnt sienna. Here's something to remember. We want our brush strokes to be smaller and more together the further they get into our scene. So the perspective of brush strokes is important. And then when you move, when you get closer to the foreground, you want bigger brush strokes. And what I'm going to do now is switch into some of this green. Go ahead and mix in some more cobalt turquoise into what we already have. Maybe some raw sienna, cobalt turquoise. Knowing, again, I keep harping on this, but everything's going to dry a lot lighter. So let's see. Bigger brush strokes up here. Smaller ones as we get further back. This is what's beautiful about watercolor are these subtle little blendings of colors that you can get. The merging of colors on the paper. Soft little transitions. Okay, a little more strength as we get down to the foreground. When I say strength, I mean more paint, stronger paint, less water. All right, we've reached the foreground here. A little more strength, more paint, raw sienna, cobalt turquoise. All right, and now I'm just thinking about some subtle effects to add a little more interest to this foreground until we just leave it alone. The soft little transitions can just imply that there's texture in the grass. little more paint.
Okay. Let's go ahead and leave it at that for now. So let's review what we did in this first wash. We covered the entire paper with the lightest values of the scene. We painted the sky, laid in the light values for our barn, hinted at some of the values for this hill, although all of that's gonna be a lot darker, and then we've painted the foreground. What we wanna do at this phase of the painting is we wanna let our paper dry, and then when we come back in, we're gonna paint our large hill and move right into these trees and connect that in with the shadow side of the barn and move into that second large shape of the scene. Before we jump into the next phase of the painting, I wanted to let you know that I have a lesson for you if you're looking to take your painting to the next level. In this lesson, I go over exactly what you need to know to paint more fresh and powerful paintings. This video lesson covers important subjects of simplification, brushwork, and most importantly, knowing when to stop before you overwork your painting. I also provide you with my watercolor supplies guide. If you have questions about brushes, about the paints that I use, the paper that I use, I go over all of this in my watercolor supplies guide. You can follow this link to get there, or you can simply go to learntopaintwatercolor.com slash seven secrets. All right, let's get back into this video and move into the next phase of this painting. My paper is dry and we are ready to move into the next phase where we're gonna think about the large shapes of the scene and connect all of this into one big shape. So what we wanna do first is we wanna go ahead and pre-mix a few colors that we're gonna need. All right, I'm going to use this medium-sized brush, you, the smaller soft brush in this phase of the painting. Let's go ahead and pre-mix some of this. Back to my base green, raw sienna, cobalt turquoise. That's the combination I use most of the time to get a, a base level, a base color of green in my painting. And what I like to do is pre-mix a few different colors so I don't have to think about that as much while I'm painting. So there's a good amount of just base green. Now I want to take what's on my brush, go over here, use some of this blue that's already on my palette, maybe add a bit of lavender. As the hill moves in the background, I'm going to cool it down a little bit. I want it to recede a little bit. So now I have a cooler green and a warmer green mixed. All right, I'm gonna rinse that off my brush. And I mentioned that we wanna paint this as one large connected shape. So I'm gonna start on the left side of my paper and we're gonna work our way this way across the scene. So starting with this base green, all right, we're going to start over here, work our way that way. I don't want to overthink this too much, there's a few little change in shape in that hill few little things, so it's not just one straight line. And as the hill comes down, you'll see in this reference photo, we get a little, it gets a little darker. I'm gonna take some lavender, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and just throw some, a little, a little bit more strength in this while it's wet. Suggest some, <clears throat> suggest some of that. And I'm gonna come to the tops of those trees, down to the edge of my barn. And this is where I need to get a little more careful 
because I'm painting around my barn. And I kind of painted over the top of some of that. So I'm going to adjust. Rinse that off my brush. Come back up with some of my green. And I'm going to cool it down a little bit as we kind of get to the distance here. This hill kind of recedes into the distance. Okay. Bring that all the way through for now. And let's look at these trees here. Let's put in some green in these trees. Just let it melt and connect right into this background shape. I'm going to mix up um, a little bit warmer of a green, a little more raw sienna, maybe a touch of um, cadmium yellow, just to give me a slightly different shade of green on a few of these trees. Letting all of it merge wet into wet. All right, let's think about the barn a little bit. Oh, actually, let me uh, finish that off. All right, uh, there's a tree over here on this side. We'll kind of let it connect into this, some of my warmer green. This is still damp. I can work a little bit into this and give it a little bit of interest. But right now I want to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do with this barn. I had to change the look of it just a little bit because I uh, painted over some of it that I didn't want to. Alright, I'm going to take some of this green on a smaller brush. And let's make sure that we're doing what we want to with this barn. I like that little edge. I'm going to take a little piece of that. And then it's going to be slightly smaller than what I originally had planned. Just because of how I painted around it. But that's okay. That's part of watercolor. There are going to be mistakes along the way, right? There we go. That's a better shape. And let's see, cut into that a little bit. I'm kind of ignoring my drawing now and just correcting it a little. Let's go right into the shadow side of that barn while this is wet and let it merge. Darker color, I'm using some lavender. And let's go right to this edge that's so important on this barn. Let 
that just merge with the background. Now let's go ahead and paint this shadow And bring this down right there. All right, so we're establishing the shape of the barn by painting around it. It's a little dark on this side, a little shadow here. I think we were able to salvage that barn after I painted it incorrectly. <laughs> All right, let's keep on going. There's a little bit of dark around here. This side of the barn, you can drop this in while things are still wet a little bit. All right, let's think about this tree and go ahead and paint that and let some of those darks merge while this is still damp. I also want to drop in a few darks here, finish that. I'm not sure what that shape is. Let me, let me get to that stuff while I still can. few darks. Bring this area forward. All right, I'm dropping in some darks while this is still damp. shadow side of this tree. Okay, now let's think about that tree. Things, things are still damp. Some thicker green paint. Raw umber. Burnt sienna. Some of my earth tones mixed with um, cobalt turquoise. I want to try to keep the brush strokes pretty clean, pretty simple. Alright, I've kind of simplified. There are two trees in the reference. I kind of just decided to make it into one. Alright, we have an old barn. We have an area of interest.
believe it or not, there's not a whole lot left to this painting. Let's think about the barn just a little bit more. As we progress in the painting, we go to smaller and smaller brushes. Now I'm using the smaller pointy brush. I can get in there and get some fine little details. Another thing to consider is at this point, this thicker wash is still kind of wet. So you have an opportunity to go in and scrape a little bit while this is still damp. If there's any places you want to put a little bit more texture, some lighter colored branches. You know, we can scratch a few of those in now. One thing that that does is it gives a little more texture to what's going on here right in the middle ground. And as a result, it pushes the background a little further back. Okay, so I'm taking this smaller brush and uh, let's see, let's handle those windows first. There's some windows on this little barn. Raw umber. Paints gray, maybe a little bit of lavender. And at this stage, it can be helpful to bring in a little piece of scrap paper as well. You can see what kind of mark you're trying to make. So I'm going to put a few windows on the front of this. little brush marks. Okay, that's good. And just uh, reinforce the shadow under there. Right there. You know, this is looking more like a, a little house than a barn, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks good. Let's think a little bit more about the foreground here. I'm gonna take a bigger brush. I'm gonna load it up with a little bit of green with my raw sienna cobalt turquoise. Take my scrap paper. Now I just want to put a few little marks to add a little bit of texture in the foreground here. give it a little bit of texture with some clean brush marks. Not too overworked. A little bit more water on my brush. Bring that all the way down. That does two things for our painting. It darkens the foreground, leads our eyes deeper into the scene, and it also gives the foreground a little bit more texture and a little bit more interest, and that helps create a sense of depth. I'm gonna go back to my palette knife Scratch in just a few little touches. That's doing the same thing, giving us a little bit of texture. And 
And if you think you overdid it, just take your finger. You can smudge it out a little bit. The majority of my painting is complete. Now, when you get, when you get your painting to about 90%, take a step back, assess it, take your time, maybe come back to it a few hours later. As I look at this painting, we're nearly there. There are just a couple little touches that I would like to add. The first thing is I want to add a little more texture onto this barn. And for this, I'm going to use a smaller pointier brush and I'm going to use the side of the brush to get a little bit of texture. So the color here is not really that important. I'm just using a little bit of some of this mixture I have on my palette that looks gray. And you see, if I use my brush sideways, I can get a little bit of that texture on the paper. That's what I'm going for here. So feel free to use some scrap paper, get out the excess moisture until you're making nice little broken dry marks. And then I want to come up to the barn and just add a little bit of texture to define the roof. The next thing I want to do is put a little bit more texture on the side of the barn. So I'm going to do the same thing here. There are a couple little darker marks on the roof. And we put a few of those. The last thing I want to do is put a few birds in the sky. And for that, I'm going to use this little sign writer's brush. I get a lot of questions about this one. You can find it on Amazon. It's called Custom Shop LL00, and it's a sign writer's brush. You can use that or a rigger brush, just anything with a fine point. And you want thicker paint on this. Again, this is where scrap paper comes in handy. And for birds, I don't want a lot of detail, just a little mark. Maybe there's some birds flying around this tree. And when you're painting birds, you don't want them all to be the same size, all going the same direction. We really want to avoid patterns. Just a few little dots. And let's go ahead and leave it at that. It's really easy to overdo these little touches. But I think we're going to stop here. We have a good impression of the scene. Now, I didn't quite get the, the angle on this barn exactly how I wanted to do it, but did I capture the essence of the scene, of this lonely building in this wide open landscape? I think we did that, and we were able to accomplish this by really thinking through the large shapes of the scene and the values of the scene. 
Well, I hope that you found this demonstration helpful today. If we can think about these concepts as we go into painting landscape scenes, it's really going to help us simplify the scenes and create stronger paintings. And before you go, if you haven't watched my video lesson, Seven Secrets to Fresh and Powerful Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link down in the description below. And in this video, I go over the seven things you need to know to paint fresh and powerful painting. Along with this video lesson, you get a downloadable checklist that you can use before each and every painting, as well as my watercolor supplies guide. So if you have questions about brushes or paper or pigments, you can see exactly what I use and you can download this supplies guide to help you when you are ordering supplies. Keep working at it, keep moving forward, and I will see you here next time.